Hello everyone, we are starting a long series about the M63 engine, which is shrouded in rumors and legends. We will review its entire history, design, modifications, features, etc. Of course, we will not forget about the M division and S engines. Today is the first part. The M63 was released in 2008 and remains in production in 2021. However, the modern N63 is almost entirely a different engine compared to 13 years ago. In fact, the only thing that hasn't changed is that it remains a V8 engine with twin turbocharging and a 4.4 litre displacement. And to really understand whether it's worth buying a modern N63, whether the company has been able to eliminate all the problems of the first engines, one needs at least to understand the design of the very first engine and then to trace the changes that the designers made with each update. So if you suddenly think it's not important what happened 13 years ago, I would still recommend watching all the videos that will be about the design of the very first N63 to stop building theories and listening to legends and understand for yourself how good or not the newest N63 is. Since I already have almost 80 pages of text just about the first version of the engine, and this clearly won't fit in a 10, 15 minute talk, the information will be given gradually. In this part, we will consider the basic design of the engine and its fundamental differences from its predecessor. First, let's recall the different types of N63 engines. These include N63 B4400, which is the original N63, O1, which is the TU engine, O2, the TU2 engine, M3, the TU3 and T3, also a TU3 engine. The N63 has only three power levels, medium, O, high, M, and top, T. Finally, the last digit represents technical updates. Zero, original design, one, technical update one, two, technical update two, and so on. The number simply represents the number of technical updates since the original design. Okay, we got a bit sidetracked and now let's go back to the very beginning, specifically to the very first BMW N63 B4400. It appeared in 2008 and was first installed on the X6E71 in the 50i modification and then it was also installed on other BMW models. It is worth noting that BMW had a huge experience with V8 engines. It is impossible to list them all and I will just provide a table of all the engines ever produced by BMW until 2008. You can compare the performance of different engines. As the successor to the M62 engine, the M63 was developed based on the principles of efficient dynamics, in increased power output together with reduced fuel consumption. One of the ways of achieving this objective is through downsizing. This means the same power output is achieved with reduced engine displacement or higher power output at the same engine displacement. Both objectives apply to the N63 engine. Compared to the N62, the power output has been boosted while decreasing the engine displacement. The N63 is the first engine worldwide to feature an optimized package involving the integration of the turbocharger and the main near engine catalytic converters in the V space. With the aim of achieving the demanding performance objectives in connection with optimum package and weight, the exhaust turbochargers and the catalytic converters have been placed in the V space between the cylinder banks, resulting in the intake and exhaust ports changing places. With short pipe lengths and larger cross sections, this arrangement minimizes the pressure losses on the intake and exhaust side. For a detailed look at the hot V design, you can watch this video, and at the same time, you can see that such a decision was not a mistake by BMW, and other car manufacturers started to use it as well. The following chart will point out some of the differences where the N63 is unique and distinct. New development. This is a system or component which has never been used previously on a BMW engine. New design. This is a system or component which has been specifically developed for the N63 engine, but does not represent a technical innovation. Technology carried over from N54. This represents technology already known from the N54 engine and adapted to the N63. As you can see, the list is quite impressive and has almost nothing in common with the previous N62. The engine housing components, including the cylinder head, cylinder head cover, crankcase, and oil pan have been newly developed. 
The most distinctive new feature on the cylinder head of the N63 engine is the inverse arrangement of the intake and exhaust ports. Crankshaft drive system includes the crankshaft which has reduced weight while maintaining sufficient strength. The N63 engine uses Vanos, which is carried over from N52. No Valvetronic is used. New tooth roller chain is used in the timing gear. The belt drive uses the Elast drive belt, but is characterized by a new tensioning system for the AC compressor. A volumetrically controlled oil pump is used for the N63 engine. In addition to a conventional coolant pump, the N63 engine uses an auxiliary electric cooling pump for cooling of the turbochargers. There is also an additional cooling circuit for the water-cooled intercoolers with its own electric coolant amp and heat exchangers. Due to the arrangement, if the turbochargers in the V-space and the indirect charge air cooling, the intake and exhaust systems are completely reconfigured. A bi-turbocharging system has been carried over from the N54 engine. A two-stage vacuum pump, similar to that used on the N62TU engine. The HPI injection system from the N54 engine has been adapted to the V8N63. The design of the high pressure pump is largely similar to that of the N43 engines. The N63 engine is equipped with a new engine control unit and new oxygen sensors. Compared to its predecessor, the N62 2U, the new N63 engine is characterized by distinctly higher output. You can see the comparison of characteristics with the N62 on the graph and in the table. The crankcase of the N63 engine is a new design based on the closed deck principle with lower set side walls. It is made of an aluminum alloy, alucil, with honed cylinder liners. Similar to the N62 engine, a double main bearing bolting with additional side wall mounting is used. There is now no coolant reservoir in this area due to the new arrangement of the turbochargers in the V-space. The two-piece aluminum oil pan accommodates the oil filter housing and the front differential on all-wheel drive vehicles. It is also important to note that the engine oil dipstick has been eliminated. Oil level monitoring is now carried out electronically as in those models. The cylinder head covers are made from aluminum alloy. There are accommodations for the, the ignition coils, camshaft sensors, and the mounting for the high pressure fuel pump. Cyclone separators are contained within the cylinder head covers as removable plastic components. There are no crankcase ventilation valves on the N63 engine, but there are externally mounted check valves similar to the N54. The most distinctive new feature on the cylinder head of the N63 engine is the inverse arrangement of the intake and exhaust ports. At the same time, optimized cross-flow through the coolant jacket from the intake to exhaust side has been achieved. The intake port features a trailing edge for creating more intensive charge movement. The fuel injectors and spark plugs are arranged transversely adjacent to each other in the center of the combustion chamber roof. There is now only one non-return valve for the oil circuit integrated in the cylinder head. The two non-return valves that were used for Vanos are now integrated in the Vanos unit. To reduce weight, the main bearing diameters of the crankshaft have been reduced from 70 to 65 millimeters. The crankshaft is a forged steel unit and contains an integrated sprocket for the oil pump. The oil pump is driven by the crankshaft on the flywheel side. The sprocket is built directly into the crankshaft. A newly developed tooth roller chain is used per cylinder bank to drive the camshafts. This chain combines the advantages of a tooth type chain and a roller chain that is high resistance to wear and low running noise. The chain tensioners, tensioning and slide rails are common parts for both cylinder banks. The oil spray nozzles are integrated in the chain tensioners. The N63 engine is no longer locked at ignition TDC of the first cylinder, but rather at 150 degree before ignition TDC of the first cylinder. To block off the engine, a special tool is placed on the torsional vibration damper, thus forming the reference for the plug mandrel to the crankcase. The lubrication system utilizes the same volumetric flow controlled oil pump as seen on the six cylinder N52 slash N54 engine. This type of oil pump offers the same reduction in fuel consumption as on past designs. 
The main difference on the N63 is that the oil pump is chain driven off of the rear of the engine rather than the front as on previous V8 engines. Most modern BMW engines use some form of composite camshafts, which are assembled from individual components rather than machined from a solid cast iron blank. This technology not only provides a reduction in manufacturing costs, but also a considerable weight savings. The M63 engine has assembled camshafts of the type as used on the M73 engine. All components are shrink fitted onto the shaft. The drive flange, the wrench flats and the flats for the special tool are made from one single component. A three point cam that drives the high pressure pump of the fuel system is additionally mounted on the exhaust camshafts. It is located after the first fifth cylinder. Another special feature of the N63 engine is that the exhaust camshafts for cylinders 2, 4, 7 and 8 produce a different valve lift curve than for cylinders 1, 3, 5 and 6. The exhaust valves of cylinders 2, 4, 7 and 8 open later. They have a shorter opening period and a smaller valve lift for even smoother engine operation. The charge cycle in the N63 engine is realized with four valves per cylinder which are driven by two overhead camshafts. The engine timing can be variably influenced by means of the two infinitely variable Vanos units. The Vanos units can vary in the range of 50 degree of the crankshaft angle. The Vanos units on the N63 engine differ from the Vanos units on the N62 engine. The function is identical, but some components have been omitted and the Vanos unit has been optimized. On the N63 engine, the individual vanes of the Vanos unit are no longer individual parts, but rather they have been further developed to form an oscillating rotor, as on the N52 engine. The torsion spring integrated in the N62 Vanos unit is now designed as a coil spring accommodated on the front of the N63 Vanos unit protected by a plastic cover. So that's what the engine and its man mechanics look like in general. In the following parts, we will examine the engine subsystems in detail. We will figure out the oil system, cooling, ventilation, supercharging, fuel system, mounted equipment and electronics. Thanks everyone for watching and see you soon. Bye.